And the new pitcher is Darren O'Day. Back-to-back strikeouts from O'Day. That earned run average keeps coming down lower and lower. If you're not used to seeing Darren O'Day, you're not used to seeing that slider that he can control and actually manipulate the break. And Darren O'Day, all-star selection for the Orioles. For the Baltimore Orioles, Darren O'Day. What's it like facing a guy like Darren O'Day and that unique delivery? For right-handed hitters, it's tough. He knows what he's doing out there. What a great career. 15 years in the big leagues. Yeah, Darren O'Day did have a great big league career. He has decided to shut it down and call it a wrap. His former teammate uh, and a guy that he went to the All-Star game with in 2015, our friend Adam Jones sending this out on Twitter. Congrats to my guy, D.O. Day 56, on a fantastic career. Walk on to an all-star. That's pretty damn good. And I think what uh, what Adam is talking about as we say good morning to Darren uh, is the fact that, uh, Darren, you were cut from your college baseball team at Florida, yet here you are still repping the brand. I guess you've forgiven them for that many years ago. Um, yeah, it's a true story. Um, you know, I got cut the first year, and then I made the team the second year. So if they, a lot of a lot of the good programs now don't even have walk-on tryouts anymore. So the fact that they had that and gave me an opportunity to keep playing um, and keep trying out at the risk of being Rudy was uh, was pretty special. <laughs> Yeah, hey, congratulations, by the way, on a great career. I know that you've uh, kind of settled into a, a good place in your brain about making this decision, but walk us through uh, kind of what you were going through when you decided to hang them up. Yeah, I think um, I think the time comes for everybody. Uh, for me, I'm very grateful that I got to choose when it was time to go. Um, you know, I just love being part of the team so much that I was kind of still playing, just pitching to uh, to be part of the team, be part of a group. Um, baseball uh, is is really one of my true loves, but uh, you, you get used to being a certain level of, of skill and talent, and then you, every year it's just a little bit off and a little bit off, and it gets a little bit harder. And my kids are growing up and getting to the age where they need me, so uh, all that added together, it was just it was time to go home. You know, Darren, I was wondering when you get to a new team, and I know you're in Baltimore for a long time, but when you do get to a new team, how do you address your style with the pitching coach? Like, are there some yeah. tells in your motion that you let them know to keep an eye out for, or did you have someone away from the game who would help you with uh, with your style? No, absolutely. All the, you know, the greatest uh, pitching coaches are the guys that are still trying to learn, and to me, a guy would come up to me early and say, hey, man, I don't really know what's going on with what you're doing. Uh, so teach me everything you can. Tell me what to look for. Um, you know, uh, those are those are my favorite kind of interactions early on with the new pitching coach is, is, uh, is those those open uh, communication ones. So we kind of work through it. We talk. I talk them through the motion. And then as the season goes on, they get to know it. And they can kind of see what I'm doing. And, and there's a couple of common faults that, that I would fall into every once in a while. So we understand that um, had you not played professional baseball and done so for such a long time uh, and such a satisfying career, that you, you wanted to go into medicine in some capacity, plastic surgery, veterinary medicine. Which of those two do you plan on pursuing now, Darren, since you're retired and you got nothing but time? <laughs> Uh, that would be neither one, Matt. Um, <laughs> they just take, you know what? God bless them. It takes so long to be a veterinarian or a doctor that it's just, uh, I just turned 40. I know I, I don't look a day over 39, but, uh, <laughs> I'm not going back to school at this point. I, I got my, you know, my four year degree. I was interested in that. And I took, you know, the entrance exam for med school and I had three years to decide if I was going to play baseball or use that score to try and get into med school. And so luckily by that third year, that third summer that my score was about to expire, I was in the, the major leagues with the angels. So my decision was, was made for me at that time. Um, but uh, I, I still, I've always wanted to be a veterinarian. And then once I found out uh, what veterinarians make coming out of school after all that student debt, yeah. I decided I'd rather be a doctor. <laughs> yeah, got you. Or a baseball player. Yeah. You know, uh, or a baseball player. You know, Darren, um, many of your great years, uh, and you had plenty of them, but most of them were in Baltimore. And uh, this past year, I got to see uh, a Buck Showalter manage and his Buck isms. And uh, 
I was just wondering, you guys have so many funny things on tape, but how, how was the back and forth with you and Buckshell Walter? <laughs> Uh, I don't. I don't think there's a manager in the game I respect more than than Buck. Um, as a player, you come to the field every day knowing that that he's the most prepared manager, bar none. Um, he's uh, almost to the point of obsession, gone through every scenario that could happen and tried to plan for it and tried to be one step ahead of the opposing manager. Um, so I, I, my time with Buck, I, I treasure because I learned something from him every single day. I really did. Um, he would sometimes at about um, five o'clock before the game, he would come in. In those days, it was the low budget Orioles squaring off with the high budget Yankees. And he would kind of tell me how he was going to manipulate our bullpen to try and get Joe Girardi, who was managing, you know, the, the Yankees at the time, to deploy his pinch hitters. And so he could deploy his, his bullpen later in the game. And, and it was crazy every night. I'd be sitting in that bullpen, I'd be watching it happen. And, and it would play out exactly like Buck described to me two hours before the game. So for him, he loves to teach. He loves, he loves for you to know how much he knows. So uh, <laughs> you, get to, you get to learn something from him every day. And, and I love that. And then also you've seen, yeah, there's a couple. Guy's a great actor. He pranked me once. It's, it's pretty famous uh, in, in my little circle. He got me good over there at City Field. Yeah, we, we, we actually uh, visited on that yesterday when we got news of your retirement decision. I want to ask you about um, one particular at-bat, a couple actually that we have on tape here. And for anybody uh, new to our sport that doesn't understand how difficult it is to hit somebody who throws with such a unique release point and style, uh, you struck out Tony Walters, um, oh, left-handed no. hitter, on a pitch that hit him in the belly in one of your last years. Well, a belly is one way to is describe that, it. Um, is that I mean, what your belly is, Matt? I guess. <laughs> I'm just trying to be diplomatic. Upper thigh, I suppose. Groin. Not fun for Tony, but had that ever happened to you at any level of baseball where you struck a batter out swinging on a ball that hit him? Um, no. I've, I've gotten a strike two in the major leagues on Eric Ibar years ago, and it, it's always left an impression because I was a rookie playing for the Angels. Mike Sosha is my manager, notoriously um, stone-faced in the dugout. And so I hit Eric. Uh, I'm sorry, I was playing against the Angels. I hit Eric in the groin area, and I look over, and Sosha is just belly laughing in the dugout. And, uh, <laughs> but that was only strike two. And so Eric got in there, and he had another chance to hit off me. But the, the problem with Tony there, and, and God bless Tony, because baseball is a hard game, and, you know, things like that can happen. But, uh, I mean, it's not even that good of a pitch. I pulled it a foot. But uh, the poor guy thought it was a heater. And, and it just so happened to be strike three, out three. So, you know, Gary just kind of patted him on the back and tagged him out. And, uh, yeah, it's good good for a laugh. I yeah. hope Tony's a good sport about it. Yeah, I, uh, we don't mean to be a little Tony. He no, had a great no. career, by the way, too. Good player. Um, I want to ask you about another at-bat uh, or another moment that we have from your career on tape. And I want to know who was laughing and whose idea was it? Was it Ron Washington's idea to give you someone else's jersey in 2009? You pitched in a big league game with someone else's jersey? What happened here, Darren? Oh, my gosh. I'll never see all those guys standing behind me. I just met every single one of them standing there on the mound. So you, um, you had gotten there late, and they didn't have your stuff ready? So the, the Mets uh, rule five me in spring training. I went through all spring training. I made the team for the season. And then I didn't pitch the way they wanted me to, so they designated me. And so I'm sitting at home in Florida on the beach uh, on that day. And at about 10 a.m., I got a call from my agent. Hey, how long is it going to take you to get to the airport? The Rangers just claimed you. They want you to go to Toronto. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, I'm in Panama City Beach, Florida, dude. It's a little <laughs> tiny airport. <laughs> so um, I arrive, rush home. I pack up. I, you know, it's, it's a whirlwind, to say the least, connecting Memphis I'm supposed to just go right to the hotel and be ready for the game tomorrow. But just in case, they put my name on the lineup card. And Mike Young hit a game-tying home run in the uh, top of the ninth. And so as I land in Toronto, I get a call from Travis Secretary. Hey, forget the hotel. Come to the stadium. So I get to the stadium. I'm stretching in my jeans. And they're saying, hey, you might be in the game next inning. We had a long bullpen game last night. 
So I'm literally stretching in my, my jeans and my dress clothes. Um, <laughs> and the equipment manager, Zach Manassian, God bless him, and Calvin Manassian, are running around trying to tear off the name off other people's jerseys. And they realize they get the message from the dugout. They don't have time to do that. So they just give me Casey Gabbard's jersey, run me out to the bullpen. I warm up and promptly give up a walk-off sack fly to your buddy, Kevin Millar. Oh, oh no. no. We didn't know the end yeah. of the story. I wouldn't even have asked you that. Yeah. Thanks, guys. <laughs> That's yeah, he, amazing. Uh, I too, and I should have struck him out. Uh, on this show, we try to stay away from uh, building the legend of Millar. Yeah. So our bad completely, and the Mets bad uh, for DFAing you in spring training. I remember seeing you in spring training. You had a great Yeah, nice job, Matt. Training. He only pitched another 12 years. Exactly. I, 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 I was just wondering, Darren, there's usually six to eight of you guys, submariners in the league at any one time. Is there a fraternity with you guys that – when you get to the opposition park, you kind of seek each other out and say, how you doing? How's it going? How's you, how are you flipping it in there? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like a slightly nerdy, very flexible, uh, you know, off the beaten path, quirky guys uh, fraternity. And, you know, we uh, I wouldn't say all the guys, but some of the guys, we kind of, you know, Joe Smith does something better than I do. So I talked to him or Steve Ciszek, who recently retired, uh, another guy I've talked to. Um, and then the younger guys coming up and, and trying to forge their way. It's one of my favorite things to do is to help young sidearm submarine guys kind of speed up the learning curve that, that we all went through. Um, it's, yeah, it's a unique way to pitch. And, you know, I'm, I'm proud of, of how I evolved it just a little bit so that I could get lefties out as well and, and still get righties out and do it a little bit differently. So, yeah, I'm, I'm proud to say, you know, I throw a little differently. Darren, way to go, man. We appreciate yeah. the visit. Uh, congrats on calling it a wrap after a really satisfying run in the game. Uh, 15 years in the big leagues. And this is where we're going to take you out on. Highest ERA plus in Major League Baseball history. I know this is, uh, as Harold talks about, real saber electrically minded stuff. This is a high-end <laughs> all-star picture. You're right, about, you're right again, Harold. You're right again. And you have a front office who's saber electrically okay. minded. All right. Yep, we got it. Uh, you're on pretty good company there, Darren, with a ERA plus of 167. Uh, way to go, man. And I'm sure this is not the last time we'll chat with you. And uh, we appreciate the visit today, man. Thanks for the time. All right, guys. Enjoyed it. Thank you.